Can you hear that? That's the sound of the ancient future. That's the sound of the modern primal. That's the sound of the archaic revival. So why is the future ancient? I've been listening to a lot of evolutionary biology and ethology, which are scientists who study the behavior of animals or humans instead of bringing them into a laboratory and dissecting them or putting them in closed conditions. So evolutionary theory is very interesting because the way animals organize, especially social animals, wow, Daniel, I love that you already got that reference. Social animals love to organize in hierarchies and structures, and humans are no exception. In fact, we have the most complex hierarchies and structures maybe on the planet, although termites and you know bacteria are vying for that role for sure. So I wanna to posit to you that the future of humanity as a species, the way we're gonna really impact this planet in a positive way, in a sustainable way, and bring consciousness to a head, bring sustainable and renewable technologies and humane and heart-based moralities and religions you know, into the fold. I think to do that, we're gonna to have to return to archaic styles of organization. And what do I mean by that? Tribes, the word tribe is a buzzword. Clans, familial domains, not necessarily based on bloodlines. We're gonna to have to transcend gender. We're gonna to have to transcend the skin color. Do you really think someone is your enemy and an other because of the amount of melanin in their skin cells? It's silly and it's momentum of history. So the future is actually ancient. We're gonna to have to align with nature. And I imagine we'll have to mimic nature. Biomimicry comes to mind if we're gonna get through this thing. It's fascinating, isn't it? If you're tuning in right now, I'd love to know where you're watching from and what you think the future is like. Is it ancient or primal? Or is it high tech and full of artificial intelligence? I think these are two diverting pathways that we're looking at. Although maybe there's a symbiosis between them. Imagine biological cyborgs that are both meat, you know, animal biology, and the power of quantum processors, artificial technology. And so I think social organization, especially in economics, especially in sociology, and especially probably in morality or the more idealistic way that humans like to stack meaning. You know, that's really what we are, meaning makers. We like to stack meaning. We like to layer meaning and create meaning in our reality. And so I think we're going to have to follow nature's lead if we want to stay on this planet, or at least stay on long enough to figure a better plan out because there is no planet B. There's no plan B. You know, there's nowhere to throw away trash on this planet. There's only Earth. And so maybe we look to the plant kingdom, or maybe we look to the fungi kingdom, the paragons of process. They have a perfect renewable way to reuse and recycle energy. And so our religions, our political doctrines, our ideologies, our art, it should mimic nature because nature is the paragon of what's happening on this planet. So let me ask you this, this is a great question. Do you think that nature follows capitalism? Does nature follow Marxism? Does nature at all resemble anything like fractional reserve banking, interest rates, anything like that? I'm asking myself these questions too because I don't know. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on the issue. For me, if we're not following nature, we should be asking ourselves some questions mainly why we feel separate from nature. And I ask, I ask all these questions in jest because I truly believe what isn't natural? What isn't natural? So that means all the supercomputers on Wall Street and capitalism itself is also natural. It's a natural outgrowth. However, is it the most optimal? This is a different question. Is it optimal? The verdict's out on that one, folks. I'd love to hear your take on why the future is ancient. 
to wrap this up, I think the future is ancient because we will have to return to archaic modes of organization and social infrastructure if we're going to continue not only to survive on this planet, which that one's up in the air, I believe, on some level, but if we're going to thrive on this planet, are we going to thrive and create a bountiful future for our children and not rob them of their future? Namaste.